Director, Kumajima Town Project <coughs> Development Office. アローハイサイ。アローハイサイ。ええー、久米島町プロジェクト推進課の中村と申します。ええー、食事の後、眠くなると思いますが、<笑>ええー。気になさらないで、ごっくり、あの前、睡眠とってもいいです。so、uh, please don't feel bad you know if you feel that my、uh, words are going to lull you into your sleep mode。So, first of all, thank you so much for、uh, allowing myself to be able to present to you. What we've been doing here at Kamejima, and so thank you to everyone who's uh, um, had any part to do with this、uh, symposium workshop. So, in the past, we have been working on the Kamejima 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 Uh, the uh, late uh, governor of um, um, Okinawa,、um, Mr. Ota, Governor Ota, and I would like to、um, you know, touch a little bit on him、um, during、uh, the memorial. So, this is one of the few、uh, last photos that we have of him you know, when he came to visit us at Kumajima. 写真はですね、昨年の6月、91歳の誕生した月に、ひょっこり久米島のお手ご覧とを訪ねてこられた時のものです。So this just so happens that you know he came to、uh, drop by at our island、um, facility、uh, when he turned 91. And he kind of you know came as a、uh, surprise, you know, and so he just came over and this is the picture from that visit. 大田先生は久米島でのお手本研究開始をとても喜んでくれました。So really really、同じく、コナでも本格的にお手研究が始まったことを伝えると、さらに喜んでくれました。So、doubly, um, the, uh, and, uh, um, the here in Kona as well.、So. I'm happy to report to you that he was very, very happy. So, I would like to send a message to the Hawaii And so, as a message, you know, he gave、uh, us at this word that please you know,、um, take care to keep on doing what you guys are doing, and you know, along with the Hawaii and Japan、uh, collaborations that you know, you've been doing, you know, keep it going. And we,、uh, I'm so happy. なぜかというと、えー、沖縄県知事の前に、えー、平和研究者である彼は世界における戦争の大きな要因の一つは、えー、化石燃料の奪い合いにあって、えー、再生可能エネルギーの普及は、えー、世界平和につながるものだと、えー、言っていたからです。First of all, before he became a politician and the governor of、uh, Okinawa, 
he first was a peacemaker and he was so interested in making peace and so he realized the the how fossil fuel in the whole, whole world history you know has created such unhappiness wars and you know um you know just trying to take each other's properties and all those you know unhappiness you know that has created so he believed deeply that you know by having this OTEC and the power uh, that it will create and lead to world peace. え、来月7月は、え、大田先生の主の伝統の式典が行われる予定ですが、え、改めてこの場を借りて、え、大田先生の功績に敬意を表すとともに、え、愛と思いを表します。So, uh, there is going to be an official uh, funeral ceremony that is uh, conducted and hosted and uh, sponsored by the Okinawa Prefecture government. But uh, um, of course, I'd like to take this time to acknowledge how wonderful you know his works have um, uh, been, and uh, so I wanted to take this moment to relay his message and his existence and what he has done to you. So thank you for the time. <laughs> え、さて、え、本題に入ります。え、これまでですね、何度かえ、お互いの島で海洋エネルギーワークショップを行ってきており、え、それぞれの取り組みは、え、関係者であれば、え、熟知していらっしゃるかと思います。なんそ、あの、
多くの農家が充実しています。So, Kumejima, of course, you know, what do we do、uh, mainly as、um, uh, agricultural、um, industry? We do sugarcane, and so we have、uh, many sugarcane factories、um, that's going on on Kumejima Island. 私の実家もですね、砂糖切り栽培で生活をしてきましたが、跡継ぎがいません。他の農家でも同じような状況が増えており、課題が山積しております。So my、um, family, of course,、um, is involved in the sugarcane fa-、uh, history,、uh, factory too. But of course,、um, as all the other、uh, families are、uh, encountering, There is no、uh, second generation that is going to be taking over the business. And so that is the kind of a, a problem that we、uh, are seeing right now.、えー、ところですね、4月にあのデニス・テラニスさんが、えー、沖縄に、えー、いらしたときですね、マウイ島はサポーティブ栽培をすべ、えー、て廃止したと聞きましたが、えー、この。サポキビ、この広大なサポキビ畑なんですが、えー、廃止したと聞きました。So yeah, I heard you know when、um, Ms.、Uh, Taranishi, Mr. Taranishi came over to、uh, visit us in Kumejima in April, you know I heard Maui had stopped the last sugarcane production, and so this you know vast sugarcane production has stopped. So I was very surprised to hear that. このマウイ島のサポキビ畑なんですが。将来的にはどのように活用するのでしょうか。So、uh, my question is, what is it going to be used for now that it's、uh, stopped the sugarcane production? I'm curious to find out what they will be, you know, recycling the land for. そして農家と製造工場はどうなのでしょうか。後で分かる方がいらっしゃれば教えてください。So please let me know after the symposium workshop. You know, if you, any of you know what is going to happen to all the factories and the land,、uh, the sugarcane fields,、um, the、uh, aftermath of you know the post stop、uh, ceased you know、uh, state. What 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 is the plan? If you know it, please let me know. Kumejima no sunde kimichi ga soko kara meite kuru yona kiga shimasu. Well, so that you know, I can take that information back home and then maybe apply it to、uh, the.、Um, The problems that we may be seeing in the future, so I would like to hear it as an,、um, uh, an example story. So, the Kumejima の基幹作物は砂糖切りと申し上げましたが、農業においてもモデルアイランドとなり得るように小さな島という利点を生かしていろいろなことに挑戦し続けています。まず次の図をご覧ください。So,、uh, please take a look at the next photo, which is、um, going to show you what. Our sort of model、um, uh, island uh, status can be、uh, attained, you know, through、uh, various agricultural、um, uh, needs and、uh, facilities, you know,、uh, aside from the sugarcane. まず一つ目の事例ですが、これは坂登ること1972年から始まった。So,、uh, this is an,、um, one of the examples you know, how we had to fight against a, a fly which was、uh, pest to our production of the, the bitter melon farm. このまあ、ウリビバイという外来の昆虫ですが、えー、ゴーヤー、えー、などの野菜に卵を産んで。沖縄のすべてのウリルミを全滅させるほどの勢いで、えー、増殖していました。So at that time, melon fly had、uh, increased and then they had、um, basically laid eggs to all the melon、um, vegetables and fruits and、uh, created、um, substantial damages to all the, the farms and、uh, farmers. To,、uh, as you can see,、um, they destroyed you know, our、um, farm products. えーまあ、久米島ではですね、えー、推定500万匹のウリミバエを根絶するために、えー、週100万匹の、えー、生,産生殖能力がない、えー、オスを放して、えー、1978年に世界で初めて根絶に成功した地域となりました。So, 久米島アイランド became a model、uh, island after trying to eradicate this melon fly.、Um, at that time, there was 5 million. Uh, estimated flies, and、uh, we released、uh, 500万匹の n t s So, weekly, we released a male fly which doesn't lay eggs, 
like a week they released one million of uh, male flies. And by uh, doing so, we became uh, the world's first successful uh, sample of uh, eradicating the smell of fly from our island. So this resulted in uh, being able to successfully um, have Goya uh, farms and we are one of the uh, major sort of suppliers of Goya um, uh, plants and fruits. Um, should we cut our stories shorter? You know, because it's kind of getting long, right? Yeah, you know, we don't have much yeah. time, yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this and that, just. <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll try to cut it shorter. <laughs> <laughs> Can you not say? <laughs> I was getting nervous, I was thinking of you know, all of your time, so sorry. So this is also the second time that we were successfully able to eradicate, you know, a pest. And this is a you know, world-class sort of you know, first time again, you know, um, case. So this is a wee, uh, a wee, um, modoki weasel. Um, it's in Japanese, it's called the elephant beetle. Um, because of, I guess, it's long, sort of beak or whatever, but... <laughs> so this is another pe uh, pest. So, um, again, next to the melon fly eradication, we were able to also eradicate this um, weevil. So because of uh, the weevil's uh, attraction to the potatoes and we were able to eradicate it, now on Kumejima Island, you know, we have a very healthy production of the, the potatoes. <laughs> so these are all the examples of the, the degrees that, you know, I eat. <laughs> so I took pictures of them, but they all utilize the purple uh, Okinawan potatoes, and so that's why we can have these, you know, wonderful um, products. So I, I was able to bring just one packet, so <laughs> if we can share with all of you. <laughs> Actually, the only other um, uh, uh, case I gave it to you for Kakao, this was an, an Okinawa, you know, from Subaru Telescope, so I kind of favored uh, that situation and gave her the opportunity. So I have to ask her, how was the taste? How, it how was did delicious. It まだ一個残ってるそうなんで、色に戻ったらちょっとシェアしてください。ここにも。ありますので。オッケー、そう、メディグルズオンリーサリダイズ。そう、メディグルズオンリーサリダイズ。そう、メディグルズオンリーサリ
in Japan, we have the number one market here. はい。オッケー。はい。え、まあ、あの、そういった、え、海洋新卒業を利用した新規事業は、え、また、いくつも、え、ま、立ち上げられてて、え、ま、これは皆さんご存知かもしれませんが、下記の、え、陸上養殖
in the future we'll look back to the pioneers that uh, helped move this work forward and he undoubtedly will be among those leaders. At this time we're going to be talking about the challenges of using secondary water, so please welcome our science officer from NELHA, Keith Olson. I first wanted to thank the friends in Elha, the state, the county, and our guests from Okinawa and Kumajima for coming out here for this wonderful conference. What if your home had no waste disposal system? No tub, no toilet, no sink. Is that something that you want in your home? No toilet, no tub, no sink? They seem very indispensable. But the problem is that most people don't want to spend money on the wastewater system. When was the last time you've gone to a, a Home Depot or uh, a home store and bought the gold pipes, the rose colored septic tank to match the windows. We don't want to spend any money on this. So, this is a real challenge. So, I'm going to talk to you about our challenges at Nelha developing a onshore 0.2 to 1 megawatt ocean thermal energy conversion facility. Now we're going to talk about five different strategies to dispose water. It could be an offshore outfall, an injection well, a dry well or leak seal, a hybrid system, and I'll get a little more detail about that later, or the use of secondary seawater for aquaculture and thermal projects. Now I'm going to talk about this in terms of time, money, and political capital. But before we start, I want to talk about a bigger philosophical question. Centralized or decentralized? At Nelha, we have a decentralized system. It has served us very well. However, over time, we seen some issues and some barriers because of that system. We may not be able to go forward as quickly having a decentralized system. But just a word of caution as my folks, my friends in Kumajima are working towards a large capital expenditure and building plants, they may want to think about their disposal system. I outlined some advantages and disadvantages in this chart. I don't want to go over all of them because we don't have a lot of time, so let's move on to some of the facts. So a 0.2 to 1 megawatt OTEC facility would discharge about 15,000 gallons per minute or up to 70,000 gallons per minute. The water would be on the cold side, 9 degrees C, on the warm side, 21 degrees C. The discharge nutrients on the cold side would be elevated, while the discharge nutrients on the warm side would be very similar to our surface ocean water. These numbers are based upon a plant at our 55-inch pump station. Let's first talk about the first type of discharge, an offshore outfall. There's huge amounts of hurdles that we have to leap in regards to permitting. There's County permitting, state permitting, federal permitting. And there's also operational permitting. And those operational permitting is dependent upon where the discharge actually ends up. If it's in the near shore, less than three miles from the shoreline, it's actually a state issue. If it goes beyond three miles, it's a federal issue. 
So here's the bottom line. We think that it's going to take a bit of time to get through all these permitting hurdles. We believe the capital cost is going to be greater than $5 million. We think the operational cost will be about 50 k But the political capital in order to do this will be very, very high. And the chance of success, low. Let's talk about injection wells. Here again, we have lots of permitting hurdles to go over, both from the county and state. But most of the hurdles are within the state of Hawaii, not so much federal issues. Uh, the operating permits would be through the Clean Water uh, Drinking Water Branch. And the time would be about a year to get these permits. The construction time, about a year. The project costs about $1.5 million, and the operational costs about $300,000. We think the political capital to do this would be very low, and the chances of success would be very high. Dry wells. This is our current situation. We discharge in dry wells of just basically large trenches or sumps. Here again, we have county permitting, state permitting through two branches, and we have operational uh, permitting. Dry wells are probably something that we in the future will not be able to do because the, the local uh, Department of Health is encouraging NELHA to move towards injection wells, the previous slides. The permitting would be about a year review and the construction probably a year. The project costs about $200,000. The operational costs about $100,000. The political capital to go into a dry well would probably be medium to high because the Department of Health would rather us do injection wells. And the chance of success of going in this direction is probably a medium. The hybrid system. So the hybrid system would use French drains and injection wells. Because the OTEC facility has two streams of water, a cold stream and a warm stream, we have more of a threat with the cold stream because it's high in nutrients and high uh, thermal difference with the receiving ocean water body. So we would separate the two and discharge the warm water in French drains, which are low cost. And then the cold water, which has a higher risk in the injection wells. This cuts the cost and the permitting down for each of the streams. Once again, there's operation permitting and construction permitting. And the bottom line here is we think it'll take about a year for the permits and a year for construction. Figure about $700,000 to $1.2 million. Operational cost between $200,000 a year. The political capital required to do this would be medium, and the chance of success would be about medium. Secondary water usage. Here again, this is a system that we currently use. So we understand what the permitting requirements are. However, the caveat or the little asterisk that I have in the green line is the Department of Health would encourage us to do injection wells for all new construction. So again, we have operational permits and requirements through the Department of Waste Water Branch and Clean Water Branch. And the time would be a lot because we would need to find customers for the water. This is a major problem. At Nelha, we had OTEC systems, but we developed a client base that uses the primary water, the virgin water. They got used to it. And now they see the potential of using secondary water as a threat to their business. So by having secondary water blended in with your primary water from the beginning, we would have conditioned our customers to accept secondary water. So once again, we think the political capital would be low for this system because this is what we currently do, and the chances of success would be high, provided we can find the customers that would be able to use the water. Let's talk about a little bit of the issues of the customers. The customers, when they receive the water, they're concerned about leaks from the OTEC system. The leaks present the challenge. 
Here in Hawaii, they're using ammonia as the working fluid. We would have to have instantaneous testing on the pipelines at very, very low concentrations. And this is really difficult to do with control loops and alarms. We don't know if we can do this at this present time. So we would have to find customers that would be willing to accept the water with these risks, perhaps algae producers, people that would use the water for thermal properties, maybe not people that are growing animals and shellfish that may find this to be difficult for their operations. So here's a summary table of what we just spoke about. I kind of highlighted the political capital. I think this is really important because it takes a lot of time and effort in order to move these systems forward. I hope this could be a guide for those in Kumajima. Maybe it's not the same system, but maybe you can think about it in the same way through your decision-making processes. So in conclusion, the development of land-based OTEC facilities at Nauhau will most likely utilize injection wells or a hybrid system. It will cost between $700,000 to $2 million. So think back to, to your house when you do a remodel. Nobody wants to spend that kind of money. We talk about OTEC here, and we, we like to talk about all the technology and want to spend the money on that, but this is a really hard one to spend money on. But we have to put it in the equation. We believe a hybrid system will reduce both capital costs and operational expenses. And an injection well um, system will increase the operational expenses just because of back flushing and other issues, but it can uh, be mitigated. Uh, the biofouling could be mitigated by reverse pumping where a uh, French drain may not use. So there's risks in which design we choose. And finally, I just want to thank you all uh, for listening to me because with time, money, and political capital, our seawater disposal challenges can be solved. Thank you. Thank you, Chief, for the Get a great job. Thank you. And now for a um, trip across the ocean. Back to Okinawa. An update on the Okinawa OTEC plant. Please welcome Shin Okamura, Group Leader, OTEC Group, Genesis Inc. Uh, we welcome 
7,100 visitors from 61 countries, very many countries, including a lot of children and students. Same as Candy Sun. We think it's a good education in terms of energy and environment is very important. And welcoming the children and the students is a very good booster for our uh, staff. So when uh, the student uh, comes, I make up myself to <laughs> 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 Then I'd like to mention the background and the objectives. Uh, this is the graph, uh, same as uh, one that uh, yesterday, Stephen, uh, Mr. Dr. Stephen Walls from DOE presents. Uh, this is the number of all the patent applications uh, as indicator of R and D. Then, uh, as you see, uh, uh, many countries have been developing all the technology uh, in recent years. Yeah, uh, but uh, many, uh, every country has almost the same roadmap. Uh, as you see, this is Japanese one. But uh, as you notice, it's very similar to Makai's roadmap, Hawaii's roadmap. Uh, because uh, to reduce the, the uh, ODEC power generation cost, uh, we should take advantage of economy of scale. So uh, every country's ultimate target is 100 megawatt, uh, which will achieve 10 cents per uh, kilowatt hour of cost. Uh, I'd, like, uh, I'd like to add one thing about the cost. Uh, I will, I will uh, take a look uh, on OTEC, and then I noticed 40 years before, the first, in the first boom, of OTEC, OTEC development, uh, the Japanese cost and US cost has much difference. About five times. Five times, Japanese cost is five times exchange as large as USA is. Because technology were not mature. But uh, nowadays, in, second, in, in these years, uh, the cost estimation is almost uh, almost same uh, among the uh, various countries uh, such as USA, Japan, and also Korea and France. Because the uh, uh, offshore uh, structural technology and also uh, power generation technology utilizing low temperature uh, difference uh, has been much work in these 10 years, I think 10 years. So the uh, cost level uh, is almost the same. Uh, among the uh, various countries. Then uh, our uh, objective <coughs> of uh, 100 kilowatt is very small and not, not uh, commercial one. Uh, the objective is uh, data collection useful for next step. Uh, that is uh, 1 megawatt and 10 megawatt. Uh, for this reason, uh, we classified uh, our data uh, three uh, three classes. The first is a uh, data having good scalability, such as uh, heat exchange performance, or uh, unforeseen travel data uh, useful for uh, consideration of redundancy uh, in the design. The second one is a uh, data used for establishment of reliable simulation. Uh, we, can, uh, we can simulate, uh, we can use the same simulation for 1 megawatt and 10 megawatt uh, as a uh, very small plant. So we can check uh, pressure and temperature flow rate of working food. Uh, and we can take advantage of this uh, of the data. Uh, the third one is uh, we can use common calibration formula uh, for design. 
So data is not so important. Uh, next, uh, I'd like to introduce some findings in four years, our four years operation. Uh, in this year 2014 and 15, uh, we did we tried automatic continuous operation, 24/7 operation. Uh, the uh, below graph shows the rate of operation. Uh, we achieved 86.7% of uh, operation in uh, year 2015. And uh, last year, uh, we tried a daily start and stop operation, uh, which is uh, more severe condition for pops and turbines. Uh, yes, and this graph shows a uh, <coughs> sorry comparison uh, between uh, simulated uh, performance and actual performance in condenser. Uh, the dot shows the uh, actual performance, and the uh, line shows the uh, simulated performance. And this graph shows the uh, one for evaporator. As you see. Uh, uh, the uh, actual performance uh, is, in general, better than simulated performance. That's mainly because uh, less powering uh, compared with uh, our... Uh, 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 less powering uh, than expected. And uh, another topic, uh, we experienced snowfall uh, in Okinawa. It's uh, the, for the first time uh, in recorded history in Okinawa mainland, and also uh, for the first time in 39 years in Kumejima. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this graph shows the uh, uh, ambient temperature and water temperature in one week. Uh, the last day is a snowfall day. You see, the uh, ambient temperature uh, at, the, at the day uh, dropped by 20 degree Fahrenheit in a day. But the, uh, surf, you can see surface water as red line. Uh, the drop is less than, less than 0 0.5 degree C, sorry. Uh, so 0 0.2. 0.2, no, no, 1 degree Fahrenheit. Only 1 degree Fahrenheit. It's very small. So, uh, and we can uh, continue uh, the power generation even in the snowfall days. And also, we also experienced the typhoon attack last year. Uh, this typhoon is the uh, uh, strongest one in the uh, Record in Kumejima. Uh, the uh, wind velocity becomes 134 miles per hour. It's a very big time, but uh, fortunately, no damage for all the system. And this uh, demonstration plant is now used as a test of it. Uh, last year, uh, Japan Marina did. Uh, a company and Saga University uh, and a new turbine uh, supported by NERO, Japanese government. And also uh, they renew one evaporator and one condenser uh, for brand new development. This, this is the picture. <coughs> and the uh, right one is the new evaporator. It's, the shape is very easy. But the uh, inside plate is different. Uh, they use the uh, hard and thinner titanium plate uh, with new surface finishing. Then uh, they can reduce the cost and the volume, uh, weight, and also they can improve the uh, performance of heat exchanger. Yes, condensers also. Then, uh, as a last topic, 
I'd like to mention、uh, about the one megawatt OTEC,、uh, next, next step for Kunejima.、Uh, from this April、uh, to September,、uh, we have we, been involved in the pre feasibility study for extension of Kunejima deep sea water intake facility.、Uh, uh, yes, the uh, focus uh, is. Uh, industry, uh, not the OTEC,、uh, but、uh, we are now studying the potential uh, uh, of the industry using deep sea water and prove、uh, the expansion of、uh, deep sea water intake facility is very effective uh, for uh, cost effective for k u m e j i m a and Okinawa economy. Okay, uh, then uh, we'd like to、uh, go next step in collaboration with、uh, Hawaii people because we have、uh, also experience, experiences and also knowledge about the OTEC、uh, using the demonstration of facility.、Uh, it's a, I think it's the best way to collaborate. Emma Paro, for your kind of attention. Thank you, Mr. Okumura. And now, with a life cycle assessment of a one megawatt OTEP, please welcome Kiyotaka Tahara, Director of Research Laboratory. Department of Energy and Environment National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology. Kiyotaka Tahara. So, my name is Kiyotaka Tahara、uh, from AISD.、Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for the, all of the friends, Hawaii friends and Okinawa friends. So, why say that Okinawa? I'm living in、uh, Ibaraki Prefecture. It's,、uh, AISD is a, uh, there is a、uh, part of Tokyo. So,、uh, we、uh, Today, I'd like to present the life cycle assessment of the one megawatt OTEC. So, <clears throat> we think the environmental impact of the OTEC. So,、uh, there is a global environmental issue and local、uh, environmental issue. So,、uh, yesterday, we、uh, talked about the、uh, environmental uh, thinking, uh, environmental、uh, how to say,、uh, Environmental issues we talk about in a group, some group meet,、uh, meeting. So,、uh, somebody said that the nutrient problem is、uh, very important. I think is that there is a、uh, problem is uh, uh, very important. So, that is a、uh, water environment, water quality. So,、uh, today, I so there is other uh, uh, environmental issues, is,、uh, of course, is,、uh, very important. but Today, I focus on the only climate change of the CO2 emissions. So, the purpose of this study is、so, to、uh, uh, evaluate the effect of the, and the impact of to the environmental when、uh, one megawatt、uh, OTEC facility is、uh, introduced to the Kumejima. So,、uh, I'd like to create、uh, to of the CO2 emission. When uh, if uh, uh, I, one megawatt OTEC facility is、uh, introduced to Kumejima. 
First of all, I would like to uh, uh, explain to the life cycle assessment. So last year, I already uh, said, but uh, uh, again, I want to uh, say to the life cycle assessment. Life cycle assessment is a, a technique to uh, uh, quant uh, quantitatively uh, assess environmental impact as associated with uh, all the stage of the product life uh, cycle from the uh, gravy to the grave. A life cycle is uh, from the low material included in a uh, mining process and uh, through the material processing and manufacture and the distribution, use and repair and maintenance and disposal or recycling. So there is a whole uh, stage we consume. So, uh, first of all, uh, then we uh, calibration of the CO2 emissions through the life cycle using the life cycle assessment. And the first and uh, construction stage in the lining uh, intake pipe and the construction of OTEC facilities and operation uh, of the OTEC and disposal of the facility of the pipe. So, this and the last, there is a uh, formula. It's a, this is the program is uh, uh, how much uh, CO2 emission per one kilowatt. So uh, construction and operation, uh, we assume in the 30 years operation and disposal. And divided by uh, 30 years transmission and power. So there is a uh, move of the result. This is a CO2 emission per one kilowatt. Uh, one kilowatt is a uh, forty-two point nine gram CO2 per kilowatt hours. That is a result. So this figure is a, a total amount of the CO2 emission. Is uh, this part is a pipe? It's a, a pipe is a uh, like a uh, laying uh, intake pipe is a dominant, and this part of the outtake facilities. And uh, what, uh, manufacture of the heat exchange. That is a uh, so that is the result. So total amount of the so much amount so kilogram CO2. Yeah. And next one is a uh, great uh, to compare to the CO2 uh, emission with uh, other studies and other type of the renewable energy. So one gamma is a, this study. So this study is about uh, 42.9 gram uh, per ki one kilowatt hour. And uh, this is very old uh, result. It's a 2.5 megawatt. So uh, Uchiyama's, Professor Uchiyama is uh, to 1992 calculated. This is uh, over 100. So this is a uh, um, 100 megawatt. Uh, this is Takara is my name. Is uh, this is uh, the, when I was a uh, PhD student, I calculated the old thing. In the I scale up to the from the two point two point five uh, studies to the scale up uh, to the calibration. There is so many assumptions in there. So, but uh, we calculated to the 14, 14 gram per wow, one kilowatt. So there is a uh, newest uh, result in the from maybe from the Netherlands. So this is an offshore type. It's a 10 megawatt is a, uh, around 40, and uh, 100 megawatt is a, around 10. So this result, this today's result, uh, this study's result is uh, comparable. Is uh, we can uh, not so big differences. I can maybe I can correct <laughs> <laughs> number of the CO2 emissions. So and then uh, we have we have to uh, more uh, we have to uh, compare to the other uh, type of the, uh, other type of the uh, renewable energy. So there is a PV that this data is from Nerha. Uh, no no no. And uh, then is uh, uh, PV is uh, eighteen to fifty. So there is condition is different. And the uh, wind power is a little bit good in the eight to the nineteen. So. This is a we can we I think is a, we can compare compare to the with the PV I think so that is my result. So then 
and uh, next one is uh, in the Kumishima is a uh, diesel uh, engine uh, generation in there. So we are compared to the diesel engine the uh, generation. Then this table is the diesel engine the condition. So and we are calculated in uh, compared to the uh, diesel engine. So of course in the 800 and 242. So if the Kumishima is a change to the to the OTEC, so very uh, good effective. So in a big big good uh, benefit in the CO2 emission in the for the uh, and uh, comparison of the CO2 emission power one kilowatt is easy. So uh, OTEC is a uh, and CO2 emission for, for the OTEC construction is a. Uh, rather than the uh, diesel engine. So, and then we have to, how many years of the operation are uh, required for the paper? So we uh, see the paper time, I heard the paper time. This line is the uh, construction and the disposal uh, CO2 emission per annual uh, generated electricity. And Operation the CO2 emission per annually generated electricity. This number is uh, in the OTEC is uh, from here to there. Those, and uh, these are engines that we see. Every year it increased to the CO2. So then uh, this point, uh, intersection point is a CO2 paper. So 1.31 is uh, there is CO2 paper. So if in the OTEC, the broken in only one year, no meaning. But over, after 1.3 years, uh, there is a uh, reduction of the CO2 emission. That's the So uh, today, uh, I present you uh, one of the results of the CO2 emission. So, uh, but just now, in a uh, temporary, our uh, not so detailed uh, estimation, I think. So I have to uh, a more detailed estimation we need. So, and then I would like to evaluate in the Kumejima model after that. So Kumejima model is, a, uh, everybody know, is a much found use of the first OTEC waters, secondary waters. Use. So agriculture and uh, aquaculture and, uh, and so on. So it, it is possible to the further deduct, reduce the CO2 emissions through the much much purpose use of the past OTEC waters. So I'd like to uh, calculate the design of the effect. And I'd like to uh, uh, propose the uh, integrated uh, uh, integrated uh, evaluation method using the life cycle assessment. So uh, this is a concept, just only concept. So the this effect efficient use of the DSW, deep water, sea water, water, and economic efficiency and minimize environmental impact. We can this kind of the issues we have combined to the same thing. So. We have to, uh, we really want to the make an uh, evaluator uh, method to the, for the Kumejima model. And I'd like to say, that last slide, that's me, is uh, I'd like to say, so I want to uh, work with you and I want to uh, introduce in the, in the world, in the, to the OTEC in the, introducing it in the world. And mahalo, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Carr. And at this time, we're going to ask Duke Hartman to return to the podium and teach us how we can build one of these pipelines in our own home. No. I wish. All right. Okay. Well, maybe I'll take a little bit more time at this.
this presentation. Um, so this title is a little facetious. Uh, I'm not going to go into technical detail of how to build a pipe, but it is, as uh, some of you are well aware, the deep sea water can be the key cost component, especially for land-based and small-scale OTEC. So an economical uh, and safe uh, design and construction of the deep sea water pipe is critical. So that's what I'll be discussing today. Um, Mackay's had experience with OTEC pipelines for some time, since 1978. Worked with, uh, Nelha has been uh, a, a great partnership. Mackay was founded in 1973, Nelha was founded in 1974, and uh, the development of both of those organizations have sort of fed off each other. Mackay has designed most of the operational pipes for the history of Nelha and the, the two primary pipes that Nelha uses for deep sea water right now. Uh, OTEC, obviously you can have offshore OTEC, vertical pipelines, and onshore systems with down the slope pipelines. Uh, we work with both, uh, but for this presentation I'll focus on down the slope. So this is just a, a list of the different pipelines we've done over the years, starting with Mini OTEC uh, back in 1978, 1979. Uh, and there have been more that we have not listed, but just a sampling of the sizes and the different lengths. If you're interested, I think these slides will be given out uh, to participants, so I'm not going to go through each of these. Okay, so let's talk about what, what kind of pipe do we use. In general, we use HDPE, high-density polyethylene, because it's a great material. It's strong, rugged, flexible, uh, fatigue resistant, no corrosion. It's, it's cheapest pipe we've seen out there, and it's proven. It's got decades of experience here at Nelha. Um, you may know of early OTEC pioneers who built their pipes out of steel, uh, and the first big storms that came through shook the steel pipes apart, because any pipe that you have in the ocean needs to bend with the ocean. It's like Bruce Lee, you'll bend, bend, you'll bend not to break. Um, and so that's why HDP is a great material. I showed this slide back in September in, in Kumijima. I'm going to show it again. Um, this is an example. The, uh, the 1.4 meter diameter pipe is is shown here. We calculated what's the what's the tensile strength of this thing. If we put a big weight on the end of it, what would that be? And we found that it would be over 200 metric tons. And so that's about three Boeing 737s. Uh, you know, hanging off the end of this pipe. So that was, was sort of a, a, an interesting example just to show that this is simple HDPE with no steel reinforcement and it's capable of huge tensile loads. Very, very strong pipeline. Um, so that's just to illustrate the example. Okay, so how, how is this pipe built? Well, it's, it's hard plastic, HDPE, and so they have a hot plate and you take two sections of, of pipe, you actually melt the ends of the pipe and you press them together in a controlled process. And those joints are actually stronger than the rest of the pipe if you do it right and do proper quality control. Um, you want to minimize flange connections because that's a failure point. Um, you, put, you put your weights on on shore, you fill the pipe with air, and you, you float it out to sea. Um, for real hands-on experience questions, I'll, I'll defer to Jan. He's probably got more experience with deep sea water pipes than anyone. Um, so he's, he's here in the audience as well. So towing and alignment, you will have your pipe in one long segment um, with the concrete anchors installed. The, the pipe is filled with air. You'll tow it out into the alignment you want in the pipe path. And then you'll actually sink the pipe from the onshore end by pumping water into it in a controlled submergence process. So you essentially pump water in the onshore end, that lowers the pipe, and you've got this air water interface there. And in order to keep the pipe from kinking, you need to exert some pull on the offshore end um, to keep the S bend in the, in the proper, um, with the proper bend radius. Because if, in other words, if you have two right angles here, you go like this, 
like that, it's, it's, it's very bad for your pipe. You can kink your pipe. Um, so you, there's a lot of analysis that goes into the deployment calculation, and that's that's what Makai's getting experience with on that, especially the pipes put in no harm. Very briefly, the two main uh, pipes in operation right now, one meter, 1.4 meter. Uh, Makai Zotec plant uses primarily, it, it has access to both, but primarily uses water from the one meter pipe. Um, so this, just briefly, the design of the one meter pipe comes comes uh, from the onshore right, right here, pump station, goes across the shoreline, and then what's sort of unique about this pipeline is that it actually goes into a floating section, a buoyant catenary section, um, where it leaves the bottom. And this dashed line here is actually what position the pipe goes into when there's a strong cross current. Uh, so it's designed to be a dynamic pipe. It's rather unusual. Um, HDPE manufacturers don't know what to tell you in terms of fatigue because there aren't HDPE pipes elsewhere in existence that we know of that are designed to be dynamic. It's a very, very unique application. And it's really the only way, the only economical way you could get down such a steep slope with a rough bottom. Uh, so that's that's the one meter pipe. It's you know was installed. It's it's got about 30 years of operating experience. There was a refurbishment um, several years ago, but it's been in continuous operation. And hopefully, we'll get you know, maybe 15, 20 more years of life out of it. Um, the 1.4 meter diameter pipe. Um, this is slightly less extreme. But again, there is a, a point um, section of pipe that's off the bottom. It was designed to be that way. And this is this is a large pipe that can support a future of that plant, a larger of that plant in our um, We have done other studies with oil and gas clients who are wanting to use deep sea water for cooling for liquid natural gas. Uh, they are the most risk averse group of engineers that we've ever worked with. And so we did a very extensive study on all the different risk parameters of a deep sea water pipe, and it was it was approved, um, you know, verified for use in, in a LNG uh, deep sea water cooling project. So that was that was sort of a, a new step in the cap. And then lastly, uh, show this slide in Kumejima, and Nelhan can probably comment on this as well. This is this is our extrapolation from from data that we had, uh, being involved in that project. Um, Rough costs, again, this is not by any means an engineer's cost estimate, but this is what we believe if you were to do a similar pipe today. Um, all the different categories are listed here, but the end result is around, and I believe this is, this is in 2016 dollars, so call it 38. Um, 38 to 40 million US dollars total for the engineering, design, installation, of, of the seawater supply system. So that includes the shoreline crossing, the tunnel, the pump station, um, dispersion wells, permitting. Again, rough costs, so you can shoot holes in it if you want, but it gives you an idea of, of the order of magnitude of costs involved in such a, a deep seawater pipe. And with that, I'll conclude. Uh, deep seawater pipes are ready for onshore OTEC, especially at the one megawatt size. The proven technology, the costs are known, and I think this kind of pipe is obviously an enabler for a one megawatt project at, at uh, Kumijima. So um, there's mutual respect between the Hawaii and Okinawa OTEC teams, and so I think our combined skills and expertise, we can make this happen. So uh, thank you very much. Now we're going to call Ben Martin. All of you know Ben is the facility manager, OTEC Group, Genesis Inc., and he will be addressing the seawater use in the demonstration project.
Okay, so my presentation is pretty similar to last year's. Uh, I'd commend you, but a lot of you weren't able to make it. Uh, but also a little bit on time, so I'm going to go through a lot of it pretty quickly because it's uh, kind of focused around the Kunjima model and uh, some updates to our facility. Um, so I'm mainly going to focus on uh, post OTEC use of deep sea water on Kunjima. Uh, the Kunjima model is a large scale, but to get there, we want to do some basic research. So Okinawa okay, Prefecture. <laughs> Okinawa Prefecture has uh, begun a new project to actually finally use uh, OTEC water for the first time in industry, I think, anywhere in the world. So the idea is to use the properties of OTEC uh, and to uh, take advantage of the temperature difference uh, and cold use uh, on Kumejima. So uh, this project uh, is Okinawa Prefecture run by three companies subcontracted. Um, and so today I'm speaking as uh, on behalf of Okinawa Prefecture, uh, since they weren't able to be here uh, for the full uh, workshop. So uh, the ODRC of Kumijima, which is the uh, seawater supplier, uh, traditionally would sell uh, water to deep sea water users uh, through underground pipes. And so it was a great system. Um, 